Am I the only one? Is it just me? Well, good evening, everybody. You know what time it is. Time for another Crown and Comment. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Crown and Comments. I'm Cruise Man, and this is my monthly or whenever I decide to do it, uh, opportunity just to kind of sit down and talk about a variety of different topics. I don't really have a agenda. I don't have a script. Uh, what I normally do is sit down and go through some of the comments that I've received on YouTube or uh, Facebook or just emails. And uh, sometimes I get a little irritated at some of the comments, and I allow my frustration to get the better part of me. And that's why uh, the Crown Royal is sometimes necessary, comes into play. But before we get started, I'm, I'm really excited. i got a lot of things to talk about. But before we get started, I do want to remind you that if you're passionate about motorcycles, because that's the primary focus of this channel, is about the enjoyment of riding motorcycles. So if you're passionate about that, uh, please, uh, we'd appreciate it if you take a t the time to subscribe to our channel. Now, we're trying to get to 50,000 subscribers this year. Ultimately, I'd like to be at 100,000 subscribers, which is a heavy lift. And I have an idea, and I'm going to talk about it a little later, uh, on how I can maybe expand the reach of this channel to bring in more uh, viewers, more interested parties. And we'll talk a little bit about that as we go through some of this. But uh, I'd appreciate it if you take uh, the time to subscribe. Click that little notification bell. It doesn't cost anything to subscribe. There's no commitment. Uh, but YouTube will let you know when we come out with new videos. We do motor vlogs, product reviews, products that you know are generally related to motorcycles. Sometimes I'll get off into the weeds and do a review of something that's kind of out of bounds. But generally, it's something to do with motorcycles. So I'm going to take a drink and get prepared for this, uh, this first comment, and we're going to talk about some of this stuff coming up. Okay, enough of that. So let's get on. I've got my MacBook 16-inch uh, MacBook Pro here. Maybe you can see it. I've got it off to the side. And what I do is I've got some of this stuff on here. I just look at as I'm going through it. Some of these comments I've copied off and put into a folder. Um, this is a comment from uh, Danny Phipps. Danny said, uh, all... <laughs> I pronounced it Albany in my recent motor vlog when I went to West Texas. And I went through the town of what I called Albany. And he corrected me that it's pronounced Albany. And uh, he's right. Um, even uh, Ricky m uh, mentioned that, that it is pronounced Albany. So why they didn't go ahead and spell it with two L's to help illiterate people like me out a little bit, I don't know, but they didn't. So anyway, uh, Danny, thanks for pointing that out. For the rest of you, you'll notice I, I mispronounce a lot of things. For years, I referred to the Cena headsets as Cena headsets. And I was corrected through uh, one of my comments that it's pronounced Cena. You know, and being from Texas, you know, to me, if you wanted to call something Cena, you would just spell it S-I-N-N-A. But I understand uh, this, uh, <clears throat> you know, millennial mentality, you can spell it any way you want and call it whatever you want and pronounce it however you want. So anyway, okay, next comment is from New Stuff. I'm not even going to try to pronounce this. H-R-I-B-A-R, -R, Rybar. If I can't pronounce Albany or Albany, how am I going to pronounce that? Okay. Um, and he says, all right, I think. He or she, I'm not sure. I was wondering if you would do a test ride vlog review for me. I keep seeing the BMW K1600B is their answer to the Goldwing. And who better to see if they're correct or right as Mr. Goldwing. I guess I'm Mr. Goldwing. 
So if you happen to have the time and want to try out a BMW K16RB, call them. I know they give bikes out to bloggers to review, and you'll have fun at the same time. Well, new stuff. I have reached out to BMW, or I've tried to. I have not had any luck getting anybody to respond back. Uh, I am interested in test riding the BMW Touring Bikes for this channel. Uh, I've reached out to several different manufacturers, and the only one that I've actually heard back from was Indian. So I am interested in doing more test rides uh, and putting videos together for uh, re video reviews of those brands. And if that's something that you're interested in, if you'd like to see me do reviews of more products and maybe even specifically how they compare to a Goldwing. Uh, let me know that in the comments down below. That might give me some ammunition uh, to go to these manufacturers and talk to them. I know this is perceived by some as a Goldwing channel. And the reality is it's a it's a motorcycle channel. It's a motorcycle enthusiast channel. And many people who own and ride Goldwings also own and ride other brands of motorcycles. They have multiple motorcycles. Many of you already own other bikes other than a Goldwing. And if you do, put it in the comments. Let me know how many bikes do you own. Same is true of Can-Am Spiders and, and uh, you know, just all over the map. So um, that's an, a direction that I would be interested in going more in this channel. And I think that would attract more viewers and a broader audience. So let me know what you think in the comments. Thank you for that comment. I am interested in test riding the BMW, the, the 1200 RT, uh, R1200RT, and the K1600B. Okay. Uh, the next two comments have to do with the chin mount. Uh, many of you saw the video, the Highway 180 West video, where my chin mount for my GoPro, uh, the adhesive came loose, and I almost lost the GoPro. Now, Jerry James said that my chin mount failed as well. Not very happy with the product. Creep up, keep up the great content and the safe ride. Uh, Jerry, I wish you would elaborate a little more. Let me know, did you lose your camera? Did it actually fall off? Um, he didn't say. And then Dennis also made a comment about the chin mount. He said, I was just getting ready to order one of those chin mounts for my new Arise Signet X helmet. Uh, let us know what they have to say once you talk with them. Also, do you still use the brake-free helmet light? Thinking about getting one of those as well. So wondering after about six months, do you still use it and like it? Okay, let me talk about the chin mount first. They really didn't say anything. Um, I sent them a video clip showing how the adhesive had come loose. I've already told you in my last video what my brother and I think might have happened. The fact that the plastic used on the chin mount appears to be, it appears. I'm not making this statement because I don't know for sure, but it looks like it's been 3D printed. And I know they have these chin mounts for God, I don't know how many different helmets, dozens of different brands of helmets. So it's possible that they're just 3D printing these as the orders come in, which would make sense because then they wouldn't have to keep a lot of you know, these chin mounts in, in inventory. However, the, the plastic used in a, in a 3D print uh, is extremely hard and slick. It's very tough. It's very durable. But I think it might be part of the culprit as to why that adhesive did not stick. If you look closely at the area on the chin mount where the adhesive adheres to, it's a bunch of tiny little rows of plastic, where, which is what a 3D printer does. And it's a very hard, slick, shiny surface. What my brother and I did is we took a Dremel tool and we tried to grind that down a little bit to make it a little bit flatter and a little bit rougher. Then we used the 3M adhesion promoter on it. We put two coats of that on. And then we put some 3M adhesive promoter on the helmet where it attaches. 
And then we use the red 3M, which is their outdoor tape, their, their strongest tape, same tape that uh, GoPro uses for their mounts. And we reattached this, and then we clamped it in place and left it clamped for 24 hours. So if that does not hold, then my only uh, conclusion is that it's very hard to get anything to stick to that 3D printed plastic. I hope that's not the case. But honestly, Dennis, I never really heard a, a comment from Chin Mount uh, as to uh, you know how they addressed what my concerns were. And as far as Jerry, I'd like to know if the uh, adhesive tape failed to adhere to your chin mount or did it come loose from the helmet. And like I mentioned in my last video, I've had GoPro mounts mounted to my helmet for years and I've never had one fail. I've never had one come loose. But the GoPro mounts are molded plastic. They're not 3D printed. Of course, they make tens of thousands of those things at a time. Okay, now let's talk about the break-free helmet light. Yes, love it. I still use it. It's been working great. I had one issue with it, or I thought was an issue, where I had allowed it to completely run down you know, the battery completely run dead. And then I went to, I recharged it completely overnight, charged it, and I never could get it to come back on. I contacted brake light support and they got right back to me and told me that that's not uncommon. It can happen. And he gave me a solution. I can't remember if it was holding the button down for like five seconds and it does something. It resets the computer or something inside. And that did it. And it's been working great ever since. So it wasn't a, a big issue. And that's probably in the documentation. I just missed it. I rode all the way to Midland. It took me eight hours to get from Dallas to Midland or from Carrollton to Midland. And the brake free was still running fine when I got there. So it, the battery on it will last a long time. So I don't think you'll have any problem with the Break Free. I'm very impressed. And by the way, Break Free is not a sponsor of this video. None of the products I'm talking about today are sponsors of, of uh, Crown and Comments. I don't have a sponsor of Crown and Comments. And uh, I don't get any commissions from uh, Chin Mounts or Break Free. I don't, you know, there's, there, there's no affiliate program for either one of those. So just want to let you know. from Mike Bustle. He says, I own a 2018 Goldwing with a CSC trike kit. This is a good question. I remember I just got this today. I would like to buy a second fob smart key, but all of the info in the videos I've been able to find about pairing the new fob with my bike says I have to open the left saddlebag. As you know, a trike doesn't have a saddlebag. Can you please advise what I need to do to pair my second fob with my trike? Now, I have not gone back and watched my video. It is possible, I think, that the ECU is looking for that saddlebag door to be open before it will let you program that smart key. I, I just, I'm going from memory here because I do recall that you're supposed to open that left saddlebag. But I don't know if that's just so you can take off the side cover so that you can get access to the short out circuit. But let's assume that you do have to have that left saddlebag door open to program the fob. Uh, I don't have an answer for this. I don't know uh, if the ECU is actually looking for that left saddlebag door latch to be open. Uh, if anybody out there has done this, uh, and you have any recommendations, please put it in the comments because I don't know uh, the answer to his question. So, thank you, Mike. Great question. I told him to contact CSC. I think he has contacted them, but he has not heard back. Good question. Okay, this is a question from Robert Bronner. I get a lot of emails and comments from Robert, and he's very active, uh, you know, in our group. Chris, 
visited Seminole Power Sports here in Florida to pick up a new battery for the 19. He means his 2019 Goldwing. All seemed to be out of stock on internet sales. Ordered the Yuasa, cost me $142.50 with a military discount. Took the time to talk to the service managers. Labor now is $145 an hour. $362.50 labor to replace the air filter plus the cost of the filter. And most Honda dealers charge $40 or $50 for the air filter. So you're looking at over $400 to replace the air filter. $652 labor to adjust the valves. It's not a frequent requirement, but it's a biggie when it is required. Now, he mentions another motovlogger that says he just paid $860 to buy and install a battery, get an oil change, and have his uh, front and rear brake pads replaced at his local dealer. And I think what, what Robert is saying is I need to mention this more about the cost of maintaining a Goldwing at a dealership because it's... Um, emphasizes how much you can save by doing these jobs yourself using my videos. He makes a very good point. It's expensive just to get an air cleaner replaced. An oil change now can cost you close to or more than $200. You can almost pay for my maintenance videos just with, you know, replacing the oil and a DCT filter and an oil filter. It's insane. So even though I mentioned earlier this video is not sponsored, that's true. I don't have a sponsor paying me to do the video or for an ad or anything like that. But none of these videos would be would be possible other than the those of you who support this channel and support my efforts uh, by having purchased my Honda Goldwing maintenance video series. That's what makes all of this possible. Next one. Thank you, Robert, for that comment. I appreciate it. Oh, yeah. I just want to show you... <laughs> I got this, I think I got it today. This one's back in April. I think I got a sec another one of these today. The reason I show you this is for those of you, some of you may have a YouTube channel. And you get to a certain point where you have X number of subscribers or X number of views, and you start getting bombarded with these companies wanting to you to review their product. And I get somewhere in the neighborhood of at least three or four a day emails from company most of them sell on amazon and here's one right here and it starts out saying need five star reviews a lot of these companies out there will give away their product to bloggers and vloggers and youtube channels but they expect a five star review in return I throw these in the trash. I just put this up on, I'm going to put it up on the screen so you can see it, just so you kind of see the kind of stuff I get. You know, I did a review not too long ago of the um, Fantic uh, battery uh, charger and, and uh, jump starter. I also did one of their tire inflator, both of which I consider to be very good products. I've, I still use both of them myself. But since those videos came out, now I'm being bombarded by companies that make tire inflators. I bet I've had four different tire inflator companies want to send me their tire inflator. They want me to review it. And, you know, I can only do so many tire inflator reviews. It's not a tire inflator review channel. And um, I get the same thing with lights. Just like the other day I mentioned that trouble light that I used when I was doing the uh, traction oil change. I had that some company had sent me that trouble light and wanted me to review it. I, I throw away 95% of these. You know, I just throw them in the trash because I just don't have time to review all these different little widgets and gadgets and light products. Occasionally one will come across that looks, oh, that's kind of interesting, that's a little different, and it's something that I can see some of you may be benefiting from or being able to use. I've got another little light coming in here in the next few days or weeks to review. Um, but I just want you to know that when you have a YouTube channel, you're going to be bombarded with this kind of stuff. And it's, and it's, it's, some of the stuff is like 
LED headlights for cars. I get all kind of garage lighting, just stuff that's way off the wall that is of no, no interest to anybody. Oh, here's one I got today. This is from Steve Timlick. I don't remember what video he was putting the comment on. But he has a very simple comment. He said, you talk too much. Uh, it's a YouTube channel. What am I supposed to do? Okay, this one is from, I don't know, uh, Zad, Tra Zad Tracks Productions. Put a comment in. This is way back on my video about Sirius XM being a scam. And because I talked about the way their subscription system and how you have to, what, how long it took me to cancel it and what a pain it was. Anyway, if you haven't seen that video, go check it out. I'll put a link up in the in this video if you want to look at it. His or her comment, stop your complaining, you're just old. So many subscription-based companies have done this strategy for decades. It's nothing new. Yes, it's incredibly annoying, but it shouldn't surprise, be a surprise to you. You should have just canceled the first time instead of giving in to the upsell pressure over the phone. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm old, okay? Uh, there's no reason why a company today can't offer a way to cancel the subscription online and make it simple. for. If they did that, I would be much more likely to resubscribe. I'll give you an example. I'm getting ready to resubscribe to Hulu because there's a show coming on that I want to watch on Hulu. I'm an Orville fan. I used to watch it on Fox. Now they've moved to Hulu. When the Orville comes out on Hulu, I'm going to subscribe to Hulu. Then I may find other things on Hulu I want to watch as well. But I've been on Hulu before, and what I loved about it was you just go to their website and you hit cancel, and you're done. There's not, You don't have to talk to anybody on the phone. It's all automated. It's very simple. And it's very legitimate. The same thing was true of Paramount Plus. The same thing is true of HBO Max. There's a lot of these subscriptions now. It's very easy to cancel. When they say you have to call an 800 number to cancel, I have to do that with Dish. I'm getting ready to cancel our Dish subscription, and you have to call in. And I know what it's going to be. Oh, well, we'll give you 10 bucks a month off if you'll stay with us, or we'll give you this, or we'll give you that. or And I, I just want to cancel. Now, that brings up another point about subscriptions. I am getting sick and tired of everything now being subscription-based. And the one that put me over the edge is QuickBooks. I've used QuickBooks for my accounting in my businesses for well over 20 years, maybe longer. I don't even remember when I started using QuickBooks. And now they've gone to all subscription-based. And it's like 25 bucks a month. You know, I'm still using QuickBooks 2019. It's three years old, but it still works fine. It still does everything I need it to do. I, I can't imagine that all of these businesses want to put all of their banking information, their payroll information, all of their sensitive financial data and accounting information in the cloud on Intuit servers so that the Chinese can hack into it and take everything. Am I the only one that's somewhat paranoid about this? I want my data and my sensitive information on my computer, in my uh, house or my office. I don't want it sitting on someone else's server. I don't know what their security measures are. I don't know who they're going to sell out to next month. I just don't want to have to think about it. I don't want to have to worry about it. All this online crap is causing, you know, now you got to have a title lock to, to protect your title. You didn't have to worry about title lock before the internet or before all this cloud business. Am I the only one? Is it just me? Tell me. Do, is, is, do any of you out there own a business and you use QuickBooks or Quicken and you're not too excited about putting all your bank account information, all your payroll information, all your assets, everything out there in, a, in the cloud on someone else's server. Because when they get hacked, whoever hacks them is going to have the keys to the kingdom for every business in America that uses QuickBooks. I don't know. I know everybody says I'm paranoid. Maybe I am.
that's my bitching and moaning for this month. Um, I am still waiting for a Cardo Pack Talk Edge. I've been told that one is coming my way so that I will be able to review it for you. Uh, I've also been told by Senna that I should be getting the new 50C that has the camera, the video camera, and open mesh. I think they're maybe having some supply chain issues, not sure. That brings up another question worthy of a drink. Are we ever going to see gold wings again? Um, I've contacted my contact in Oklahoma about the 2022 gold wing. And uh, this is Jason up at uh, Shawnee Honda. who He's a sales manager. And this has been, I guess, a couple of months ago. And he said they had no information from Honda. Maybe in June they might be getting a 2022. I don't even know. He said something to that effect. Um, is Honda even making gold wings now? Um, I've been... I'm interested in the 2022. Not only do I want to go up there and do a test ride for the channel, I might actually be in the market to buy a 2022. Good luck finding one. Now, I looked on Shawnee Honda's website the other day, and I looked at their new inventory, and assuming that their website is up to date, it doesn't look to me like they have that much to sell right now. So what are the Honda dealers in your area? What do they what does their inventory look like? I rarely go to a Honda dealer here locally. Um, maybe I should get out and get on the bike and go look at one. But is this unique to Honda? Uh, are the European brands having these same supply chain issues? What the hell is going on with this supply chain? And is it ever going to get better? The inflation is insane. So and and so is this supply chain thing. So anyway, if any of you know any more than I do, put it in the comments down below. I also want to take a second to sincerely thank all of you that sent your condolences and your thoughts and prayers to Ricky for the loss of her mother last month. Um, it didn't go unnoticed. I really do appreciate that. Uh, this is a... Uh, really shows me how special some of the people are out there in this community and it's very much appreciated i was very touched by it um thank you very much and uh, it like i say it did not go unnoticed and and i'm just going to end on that note thank you for supporting this channel if you liked this video please click that like button really helps us with YouTube. Remember, we're trying to get to 50,000 subscribers. The more you like, more people who like the videos, the more YouTube will show this video to other people out there in their community uh, that are not subscribers to this channel and that hopefully that will bring in more potential subscribers. So thanks for supporting the channel. I'm going to see you on the next Crown and Comments.